Pierrita levó mi sorriso, no sorriso de la me guaso. Levo junto con ella que mi de derecho arrancó me do peito y tengo más. Levo su retrato, su trapo, su prato, que papel. Una imagen de San Francisco y un buen disco de Noel. Y a Rita mató, no somos de venganza, ni heranza de show. No levo un tostapo que no tenía nada más que su perro y daño. Levo los mis planos, mis pobres engaños, y los mis 20 años y un meu corazón. Y allí de todo me dejo mudo y un violón. Rita Payas, an Italian trombonist and singer who turns 20 this year. She was introduced to me by the YouTube algorithm. Her thumbnail was on my feed for three weeks before I clicked on it, and uh, I'm sure glad that I did. I, I think she's got a big future ahead of her. Shout out to Big John Laughlin, who I met at Chicago last Saturday. Of course, Big John, being another trombonist, is going to subscribe to Rita Payas. I think everybody should. There's a link below. Empty your colostomy bag. It's time for another Northern Bohemian video. High diminishing portion of the YouTube pipe community. Today... Tobacco Reviews from the 2019 Chicago Pipe Show. But before we begin, remember to give this video a thumbs down and unsubscribe from my channel. Thank you. I'm smoking today John Cotton's Double Pressed Kentucky in this Bull Moose Basket Pipe. Just look! At that grain. Shout out to Mr. Michitomi, known as Mitch in the community. He's been a YTPC guy for several years. Very dear to me. He's a gentle, wonderful fellow. I think everybody should subscribe to him. The story is that his hometown was Fukushima. And when the nuclear disaster came, he fled to Bangkok. Got married there, runs a business there. He came to our pipe meetup in Nashville a few years ago. And then the following spring, here he is in Chicago. It was just wonderful. Unfortunately, after that, he had some health problems, serious health problems. And he's been recovering ever since. I enjoy his videos, especially when you realize his native language is Japanese. Japanese to English is not an easy thing. Uh, and now, I don't know how much Japanese he's able to uh, use, because here he is in Thailand. So at least Thai, Japanese, and English. But all of his pipe videos are in English. So please subscribe. Well, in addition to Big John Laughlin, I was honored to see DW in St. Louis at the pipe show. Here's a picture of him with his new Meerschaum, a 320 shape that made me jealous. Wonderful looking pipe. Bunch of the intelligentsia got together. Among them, Tom, the diabetic man. And while we were all chatting, it occurred to me that Tom and DW are two gentlemen who can hold a conversation with anybody. They're really wonderful fellows. There are links to their channels below. So if you're not subscribed, Please subscribe. My Chicago Pipe Show venture this year was a bit limited. Came over on Thursday, and a couple of us Intelligentsia boys went out to see the Chicago Symphony Orchestra, arranged for us by the world's most famous pipe smoker, the Smoking Pipeliner. And that evening's presentation was Pines of Rome. If you don't know Pines of Rome, you should. I have a link to one of the Fritz Reiner recordings from the late 50s, and this presentation was very close to that sound. There was a replacement principal trumpet that evening, 
who led the group, at least the brass section, back to the old Reiner sound. Those guys were really cranking it out, man. And uh, it uh, was really an impressive thing. The best concert I've seen in my lifetime. And that's saying something because I've probably performed and uh, attended at uh, over 500, maybe 600 classical music presentations. But that one was one for the record books. Absolutely wonderful. Plus, one of the reasons it might have been so uh, exciting was the uh, uh, strike had just been uh, ended. And that was the first concert after the strike. Absolutely wonderful. Well, one of the things I spent uh, Friday uh, with the smoking pipe liner and classical pipes, Dion, and uh, did not make it to the show that day, which may have been a mistake, uh, but I just really enjoyed myself. And the smoking pipe liner brought out two relatively new blends. Sutliff Crumble Cake, Red Virginia, and Sutliff Crumble Cake, Virginia Perique. Sutliff Crumble Cake Red Virginia is, <laughs> is being marketed as an alternative <laughs> as an alternative to the McClellan 5100 Red Cake. Now, if you've had both, <laughs> the only response is, yeah, seriously? <laughs> now, I finish bowls of pipes, and the reason I finish a bowl is sometimes there's a big shift toward the end. Things can get a lot deeper, or maybe some of the uh, casing will burn away and you get a completely different flavor at the end. Couldn't get there with this red cake. My, this uh, crumble cake red Virginia. Oh my God, uh, on, I probably made it through a third of a bowl. This stuff is horrendous. It's terrible. It's awful it should not be sold uh i wouldn't take it if you gave it to me uh so my review of sub sutliff crumble cake red virginia it's not nice <coughs> so then i tried the crumble cake virginia perique i made it to about the halfway point on that uh, Sutliff Crumble Cake Red Virginia is the worst tobacco I've ever had. The Virginia Perique version, the second worst tobacco I've ever had. I would not compost this stuff for my garden. So my review of the Virginia Perique uh, sister is, it's not nice. I got to the show Saturday morning about 10 o'clock or 10.30. The show looked to be larger than ever. Um, there were some wonderful things. Briarville Rick uh, had a stand out in the hallway where he would buff and you know clean out pipes for people. And the beautiful part of that, and of course Rick is a beautiful person, uh, the beautiful part of that was that all the funds were given to the Wounded Warrior Project. So hats off to Briarville Rick, and I hope he does that from this point forward at every Chicago pipe show. So I walked around the, uh, the uh, event. As I said, I didn't make Friday. The big thing for me are people selling their sellers. That's really the number one thing. There's people who get out of the hobby, so they get a table and then they bring their tobaccos and sell it off. And in years past, and I've been going, I think since 2008, uh, I usually walk away with about, oh, at least two pounds of free samples and usually you know, eight or ten tins that I've purchased from people uh, at their tables. And usually the tins were like eight or ten dollars, sometimes less, sometimes more. And uh, there was none of that this year. So it was, it was very, very different. The first thing uh, that I looked at was out in the tent, and that's the Chicago Bowl. Every year they've had a pipe blending competition. And this year was Virginia's. I think there were five Virginias there, but I only remember four of them. Uh, and those four were really obvious to me. The first was Newminster Superior Navy Flake. 
this is a competitor to the Peter Stokovy Luxury Navy Flake. And uh, Luxury Navy Flake, probably a little bit higher quality, uh, but the flavors are about similar. And Newminster Navy Flake and Peter Stokovy Luxury Navy Flake are nice. <laughs> Next was the new John Cotton's Double Pressed Virginia. And that was uh, real obvious because it kind of comes out in uh, like a broken flake. <clears throat> and uh, I've had that. I've bought a sample of it. I have it here somewhere. And uh, I like it. It's pretty nice. However, it is a Sutliff product. It's so obvious that it has been cased, uh, probably cased twice. It's been pressed, maybe steamed, uh, then rolled, then pressed again. I think that's just overproduced. So the flavor that you get at the beginning of the bowl is exactly the flavor you'll get at the end of the bowl. I've had to dry it out for three days before it goes all right. And I'll probably buy a tin of that at some point. Not at the current price point, because this is a middling to lower end Virginia. Uh, it's not a great Virginia. There's so many more out there that are, that are far superior to this. But there are times when, you know, some things appeal to you. So I might go on that. So John Cotton's Double Pressed Virginia, it's nice. The other two were the that I remember were the Sutliff Crumble Cakes, the Red Virginia and the Virginia Perique. And both of those are just god-awful. So I just left those in the jar, didn't even take a sample of them. There's no sense in it. During the show, five vendors offered samples. Steve Monjour, and I'm a big fan of Steve. Um, I have all of his blends, uh, the Brebbia blend, Solani. Uh, they're, uh, I think he's got an Italian blend, but they're all European blends that he imports, and they're all excellent. I saw the Kamois table, and I think you could take samples of Kamois, but you know, those Kamois blends just don't do it for me. I think I have a tin or two, I maybe, but I'll, I'll sell those. So I didn't take any samples of that. Uh, I think Mark Ryan offered some samples, but I have all of his offerings, and so there was no sense for me sampling any of that. But I did buy some of his uh, Blender's Bench series, which is just excellent. Lane had a big table, well, three tables in the tent, I think they probably had 40 jars of uh, various Lane offerings, and I got things that I hadn't seen before. The first one was 315 Black Coffee, which is an aromatic, and I had two bowls at the show, and uh, I enjoyed it. Um, it does have a coffee essence to it, and so that one is adequate, and my review on that is, it's nice. <laughs> They had a jar of Lane Bright Virginia, which I hadn't seen before. So I took a sample of that and uh, I smoked uh, two or three bowls of it here. Now the Lane samples were very generous. I would say six or eight bowls, maybe almost an ounce uh, that I got of each of these. And uh, the Bright Virginia is very nice, but frankly, I prefer Mark Ryan's Three Sales. Um, three sales, a little bit, well, a higher quality leaf, but more important than that, there's no casing. Uh, Mark doesn't do any of that, where all the lane items are cased. Uh, so uh, I thought it was nice, but I prefer uh, three sales. So my review of Lane Bright Virginia, it's nice. Next, Peter Stokeby 314 Dark Fired, which I haven't had yet. And then Peter Stokeby 702 Burley, and I haven't that, had that either. Obviously, those last three tobaccos are intended for blending. And uh, Lane, I've got a lot of respect for Lane. They've been around for a very long time. Uh, all in all, the quality of tobaccos is very high at Lane, uh, unlike some other blenders. Uh, it's a reliable outfit, and I do recommend them. So if you want to do your own home blending, uh, you can look, obviously, I point you to Mark Ryan. Uh, for those things. He's got almost everything in the Blender's Bench series, uh, but then also the regular offerings are really, really nice and will work. Uh, but if you want to do your own blending, look to Lane, and I think the small shops have always looked to Lane to do that kind of thing. Then came the Comedy of Errors. <sighs> 
the diabetic man, Tom, and I tr uh, made a video with Per Jensen. Uh, Tom brought a 50-year-old tin of tobacco, and I recorded it. Unfortunately, I now have this XTE Chinese-made phone, and the video looks great, wonderful. But the audio, whoa, Nelly, <laughs> the audio is the worst I've ever come across, and I've come across some bad audio. Uh, I could have done better with a 1975 Radio Shack uh, eight-track recorder than uh, what I got on here. So I've been trying some uh, remixing on that, uh, and what I'm going to have to do is uh, release that with real low audio and then close captioning. I hope to get that out by the end of the weekend because it is an interesting uh, uh, talk that we had uh, with Per Jensen, and the tobacco was amazing. Um, 50 years old, you know, uh, so I'll try to get that out, but that's my apologies on that. And as uh, part of that discussion, here we are, of course, at the McBaron table. McBaron also, uh, you know, owns Sutliff, kind of the redheaded stepchild of the company, in my opinion, and they were pushing this, uh, this uh, coupon, $5 for this coupon, and then you get four samples, all right? Now, mind you, the Lane samples were 50 cents a piece. These were, you know, buck and a half or whatever that works out. And a uh, buck and a quarter. All right, fine. You know, I'll get it. Uh, so give me the samples. Oh, no. No, no, no. The samples aren't here. You've got to go to the other tables. What other? What are you talking about? Well, go over there and see that man, and he'll give you the tobaccos. All right, so I go over and see that man. It was the Seattle Pipe Club man, and I picked up Wild Man. I have that here somewhere. From him, yeah, here it is. They put the sticker upside down on it. So I got the latest Seattle Pipe Club offering for Wild Man, probably three bowls in there, uh, from him. And I said, now there's uh, three other ones. Oh, I don't have those. you got to go to back to McBaron to get those. Oh, all right, fine. They told me I had to see you. So I go back to McBaron, and, uh, well, you know, he gave me this Seattle Pipe Club. He punched the things, and I want the other three. Oh, we don't have those here. No, no, no. you got to go to a different place. What are you talking about a different place? You told me to see that man over there. Well, you got to go to a different table. It's kind of over in this area. Kind of over in this area. So I kind of I wander over there, and I'm looking around, looking around. I must have looked for 10 minutes, and then, uh, then I see the table skirt for pipes and cigars, and sure enough, they had these, and they gave me them. So I got the John Cotton's Double Press Kentucky, Double Press Virginia, and Bengal Slices. Now, I've got a few things to say about these, all of these blends. The first one, uh, Bengal Slices White. Bengal Slices White is a crumble cake, supposedly, uh, uh, English blend. And uh, so is the Wild Man uh, crumble cake made by Sutliff. Now, I don't know what's going on there, but these are not crumble cakes because it does not break down to ribbons. It breaks down to this kind of, see it, coffee grounds style. And uh, that one I haven't really gotten into. But it was the same with the Sutliff uh, Virginia cakes. It just breaks down into this uh, really goopy uh, coffee grain style uh, tobacco. And uh, I don't like it. I don't, I just, I don't like it at all. The Wild Man is also in English. A little deeper than Bengal Slice's White, but barely adequate. Uh, I will not buy it. Again, there are so many much more higher quality Englishes out there. So my review of Wild Man, it's not nice. Then we get to the John Cotton Double Pressed Kentucky Double Pressed Virginia. And it was explained to me by the salesman at the table that they make it at the factory and press it. Then they roll it out and they send it to the John Cotton's people who press it again. Well, you know, 
that's what goes on with the uh, Seattle Pipe Club ones. Uh, I have a couple of older tins of Seattle Pipe Club. I'll probably sell them. I am not a fan of this tobacco. And the reason I'm not a fan of Seattle Pipe Club blends, any of them, is to me they taste overproduced. They taste like they've been cased, pressed, tumbled out, recased, uh, pressed again, and maybe tumbled out again, uh, maybe steamed. Uh, and with all of that, uh, it eliminates any individual flavors that might come out within the blend. You know, a great English, you'll be puffing along and then you'll hit Orientals. Oh, that's really great. And then they'll go away and then they'll hit a real high quality Virginia flavor. Wow, that's really wonderful. And then occasionally the Latakia will whack you. And oh, okay, great. And you make it through that and then back to other kinds of flavors. Not so with any of the Seattle Pipe Club things. You just get one flavor top to bottom. And uh, like I say, it's just middling. And uh, that's what I got as well with Bengal Slices, just one flavor top to bottom. So here we are with a double pressed, and again, they just taste overproduced to me. Both of them are fine. Uh, I've almost smoked up the Kentucky, almost done with the Virginia. They don't break down to uh, the coffee grounds. They break down to kind of smallish uh, ribbons, which is what a, you know, a, a cake should be. Uh, the Virginia is delivered kind of as a, well, both of them are delivered as kind of a broken flake. Um, and I might buy a tin of, uh, of each, of the Kentucky and Virginia. I'm not going to buy two tins. And I'm not going to pay what they're asking right now, which is my next part of this, <clears throat> part of the comedy of errors, right? Number one, you got to run around the show trying to find where these are. Number two, well, now look at that coupon because you get 15% off and we've got these introductory prices. Introductory price on Wild Man. Now, this is the saving price, right? $13.79. Well, I'm not going to buy it at any price, but that's crazy. Double Press Kentucky and Virginia, $12.99. Maybe, but not for me. And Bagel Slice is $11.99. That was our introductory price. So, you know, I get back, uh, do some yard work on Sunday, do some uh, work in the business on Monday and Tuesday, Wednesday. I look at uh, this coupon, and it didn't, I didn't see it at the show. Look what they did here expires May 8th. Now the show is May 4th. <laughs> so you got four days to collect on your coupon. <laughs> I have never seen that before in my life. Yeah, four days. So my question to you is, who goes to a pipe show and come home comes home with any money? Right? Nobody has any money. And, and I don't know what they were thinking on this thing. As, as far as I'm concerned, like the Seattle Pipe Club, they can charge whatever they want because I'm not going to pay it. The two John Cottons, I'm not paying thirteen. I'll pay eight fifty. Okay, if they have it on sale for eight fifty, I'll buy one tin of each. Uh, ten bucks? No. There's much higher quality tobaccos that I can get for ten dollars. Uh, especially the Euro And if I'm going to pay thirteen, well, then I'll get the European blends from Steve Monjure. I'm not going to buy this stuff, the Sutliff stuff. And then the Bengal slices again, just a middling English doesn't develop through the bowl. So Bengal Slices, uh, it's okay. It's not bad. It's adequate. So my review of Bengal Slices, eh, it's nice. So those are my reviews from our Chicago Pipe Show. Now today we had a wonderful video by Quaker Piper, who a while ago said he wasn't going to put up videos anymore. So I'm very glad he changed his mind. Take a look. It's not for everybody, but it was for me. Uh, really an enjoyable video. Uh, there's a link below for Quaker Piper's latest video. And that leads to my question. When you're dealing with an elderly person, uh, somebody who's kind of overweight and never really faced any responsibility in their life, and they start saying things that are obviously wrong, the question becomes, are they lying or are they just demented? Is their statement coming from dementia and uh, I guess I'll just let you decide
But your Democrat governor here in Wisconsin shockingly stated that he will veto legislation that protects Wisconsin babies born alive. Born alive. The baby is born. The mother meets with the doctor. They take care of the baby. They wrap the baby beautifully. And then the doctor and the mother determine whether or not they will execute the baby. I don't think so. Incredible. No, it's incredible. Until this crazy man in Virginia said it, nobody even thought of that, right? Did anyone even think of that? You hear late term. But this is where the baby is actually born. It came out. It's there. It's wrapped. And that's it. Who believes it? And then the doctor and the mother determine whether or not they will execute the baby. And then the doctor and the mother determine whether or not they will execute the baby. And then the doctor and the mother determine whether or not they will execute the baby. And then the doctor and the mother determine whether or not they will execute the baby. And then the doctor and the mother determine whether or not they will execute the baby.